Hi, it's Anne from One Determined Life. I just want to thank you so much for joining me today on my free teaching Thursday. This is when I hop into this Facebook group and I do some free training. And today I'm so excited. I'm going to be talking about the difference between reading your Bible and studying the Bible. So I've been changing up the format a little bit today. I've just got some slides for you, but I wanted to start first to just say hi so you can see my face. Um, but I'm going to go from here and jump into my slides and then I'll see you at the end. And so today I'm going to cover three things, the difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible, what the Bible has to say about it and why each are important. I'm really excited about this session. So let's just dive in. Sometimes in Christian circles, we use some words that don't make sense to other people. And other times we use words we think they, we know what they mean, but we actually don't. And so on my blog and on this Facebook page, I talk a lot about reading the Bible and Bible study. And today I want to make sure that we all understand the difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible. And I'm going to give you some simple guidelines regarding which to use and when. So what's the difference between reading the Bible and studying the Bible? It's important to know the difference between the two and what they mean. So when I use a particular term, we can all be on the same page. To start off, let's define the terms and then I'll talk about which each one can be used for. Reading the Bible. This definition may seem simple, but it's still worth covering. Reading the Bible is exactly what it sounds like. It's when someone opens the Bible and reads one verse or more. This may sound simple, but it's oftentimes hard to implement. We may look down on just reading the Bible, but I want to share a quote with you. And this was said by Billy Graham. The very practice of reading the Bible will have a purifying effect on your mind and heart. Let nothing take the place of this daily exercise. In today's world, our minds are filled with images we see, which can be dirty or mean thoughts that go through our mind and so much more. One way to cleanse ourselves from all those things is to fill our minds with the word of God. When we know what the word of God says, we can use it to fight against the enemy. A perfect example of this is the temptation of Jesus. After 40 days of being in the wilderness, the devil came to tempt Jesus. Matthew 4, chapter 1 to 4 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I love this story because Jesus is showing us how to fight the devil's lies and temptation. Jesus uses scripture and so must we. The scripture is full of truth. And the only way to fight against the lies of the devil is to respond with the word of God, which is truth. But we can't fight with truth unless we know it. And so one way that we can know the word of God is to read it every day. Studying the Bible. Many people have different definitions, but this is mine. So Bible study is when you read scripture and then take some time to understand what it says through asking questions, defining words, looking at scripture, comparing it to other scriptures, looking at larger themes and connecting things across scripture. Studying the Bible takes Bible reading to the next level. So last week, I told you some reasons why I think it's important to read God's word, but there could be a danger as well. When all you do is read scripture, it can become an exercise we do just to make us feel like we're doing what we're supposed to do. This is honesty time. How many times have you sat down open your Bible, read it, and then just completely forgot what you read. Or you thought, okay, I've read the word of God and then moved on, but your heart didn't change. Your thoughts weren't actually on your words. You weren't really in the presence of God. You were just reading your Bible for the day. I don't say this to try to put you down in any way because this happens a lot to me. Sometimes I'll open God's word and I'll read through some verses and I'll get partly through them and realize I have no clue what I'm reading. 
I don't know what I just read. And so I have to go back and read it again. And sometimes I have to go back again and read it again. And so this is not at all any way to point people out. It's really mostly convicting to me that reading scripture isn't just about checking off the list. It's about really letting it soak into our brains, letting it pour over our hearts so that it moves us in some sort of way. The Bible actually gives a really good example of this. In James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25, it says, For if you listen to the word and don't obey... It's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Just reading God's word and then totally forgetting about it would be like going to the mirror and looking at my face and walking away and completely forgetting what I've just seen. It's a pointless exercise. So if we're going to open the word of God, we need to have purpose behind it. Like when I go to the mirror, it's to check my face to make sure there's nothing dirty on it, to wash away something, to make sure my hair isn't frizzy and going everywhere. There's a purpose behind it. And it's the same when reading the word of God. When we have purpose in opening it, it isn't just about completing something. It's about letting it affect us showing us, you know, whether we need to change something or to make sure that we're doing well in our relationship with the Lord. So if you're like me and you often read God's word and totally forget what it says and have to go back to reread it, you might be asking, well, how do I change that? What's the remedy? I truly believe that the word of God becomes so much more precious when we spend some time and study it. I often feel like Bible study is like a treasure hunt. You spend some time reading God's word, contemplating it, comparing it to the scripture, thinking about it. And when you do that, you always find these little gold nuggets. Something the Lord reveals to you, shows you, or teaches you. And because you were the one to find it, it's precious to you and you remember it longer than if someone else found that nugget and told you about it. My kids love treasure hunts, whether it's for gifts or pictures or even candy. They love searching for something. And when they spend time searching for them and then find it, they get so excited. They're running up to me and they're like, hey, look, mom, what I found. But if they're not looking for it, then they don't get that excitement. Or if they did the hunt and they found it and they showed it to their sibling, their sibling's happy to hear about it, but they just don't have that same level of excitement. And it's the same when it comes to digging deep into God's word. I'm all for listening to messages and reading scripture and being part of things that are intakes, but I just believe that when there's more purpose to it and just taking the time and even asking one question is going to help you find these little truths, these encouragements for yourself that are going to be just that much more meaningful. So you might be asking, well, which one should I choose? Bible reading or Bible study? Which one do you think? In the comments, if you chose Bible reading, I want you to say A. And if you chose Bible study, I want you to write B. Do you want to know the answer? Should you choose Bible reading or Bible study? Well, that was a trick question because the answer is both. As Christians, we should be doing both. We should be reading the Bible and we should be studying the Bible for ourselves. They are equal to each other and they're not in competition We should not be using our Bible reading habits to compare ourselves to other Christians or a way to feel more spiritual than another. That is not what God intends. God's desire is for us to know him and to be close to him. He's given us his word for each of us to read and holds court for us to enter into his presence anytime we want. So for myself, 
when I have a really busy schedule, I may do some Bible reading a little bit every day. So I'll read a couple verses every single day, and then maybe once a week, I'll dive deeper and do the Bible study. So I'm doing both, but I'm not necessarily doing both every day. And so for your schedule, that might look differently. So this answer isn't just black and white. It's about combining both to encourage yourself in your walk with the Lord. And I just challenge you to just start. So if you're only doing Bible reading, continue with your Bible reading. But after you've done your Bible reading, maybe just start by asking one question to help you just dig a little deeper and then go from there. Because the word of God is so powerful. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I've been reading the Bible for a long time, and I just want to tell you how great it is. It's living and it's powerful and it changes your life. I've been a Christian for more than 30 years, and you would think that after this much time, I'd get bored of it. But every single time, even when I don't want to read the Bible, I open it and I read some scripture, the Lord always encourages me. Sometimes it's exactly what I needed to hear from the Lord. And oftentimes it's convicting and shows me areas of my life that just aren't the way they should. And I know sometimes that sounds scary because we don't love change or we don't want to feel convicted, but none of this is coming from shame and guilt and hatred. It's coming from a place of love because the Lord wants you to be spending time with him and to becoming more like him. And he corrects us just like a loving parent corrects their children. Like when we say to our kids, go wash your hands, how often do they want to go and wash their hands? But you know, as a mom, that if they don't wash their hands, you know, they're going to get germs in their mouths or dirt all over the house. It's not going to be good. And so just like you are looking after your children because you love them, the Lord looks after us and he tells us what to do through scripture because he loves us and he knows what's best. And I know that starting to read your Bible or even Bible study itself can be really intimidating. And that's why I'm so excited to tell you about the Faith in Action Conference. This is a free four-day virtual event to help Christian women take action in their faith through a deep dive Bible study of Matthew chapters 5 to 7 and parts of James. The Faith in Action Conference is all about helping Christian women take action in your faith through doing some deep dive Bible studies. There will be 16 speakers over four days, and they will each help you discover how to live out your faith by looking at Matthew chapters 5 and 7 and parts of James. These chapters are filled with practical advice for us, everything from how to treat one another to marriage advice. To register for the conference, go to www.onedeterminedlife.com forward slash faith or scan the QR code. Register today and I can't wait to see you there. Bye.